it's 4 a.m. We slept here in the airport in Cape Town. And now we're gonna go and check in for our flight to Namibia. Not the best sleep of my life, but one of the better airport sleeps of my life, I guess. <laughs> Test will come tonight when we are at the campsite and we have to figure out how to do this all ourselves. We're gonna be sleeping in that thing for two weeks. <laughs> okay. So our entire day got completely fucked up, excuse the French. We landed in Windhoek in Namibia, uh, picked up our rental car, which you saw the videos of. We drove into Windhoek. And then um, within two hours, we went into a cafe to do some work. And within two hours, this window was forced open and um, Nikias' suitcase was stolen. We got the entire thing on security camera footage. So we've just spent the last three hours with police filing reports. Um, we're currently at the camping store to get the window fixed because obviously we can't keep driving around with a broken window. Um, and we were meant to be heading to the campsite three hours ago already. Not a good couple of first hours in Namibia. Um, obviously, we didn't want to be in a police station. We're hot, we're tired, and Nikias has absolutely no stuff left. No clothes, no shoes, no toiletries. Thankfully, we had all of our valuables with us in the cafe. We've got passports and everything. This is the police report that we filed. Um, and now we wait. We did get really good uh, CCTV footage of the suspects, which is now with the police to try and locate. Not what we were hoping to have on our first day of our holiday. Okay, well, we are on the road. We're left with Oak. We were sick of the city. Um, and we're out in Namibia, as you can see. Um, the police are on the case. That's all we can hope is to hopefully get an update from them. Um, but there was no use of us just sitting in the city waiting for an update that might never come. So we decided to stick with the itinerary. Uh, we have a four hour drive out of Wintoke to the desert. Windhoek a lot later than expected with the Palava today. We didn't make it quite to our campsite that we planned for tonight, but we've ended up in a place called Solitaire and uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is our camp spot for the night. <laughs> it's been a, been a hell of a day. <laughs> absolutely zero food in our car and only one of the suitcases wasn't much to set up looks good though I'm glad we stayed put we would have had another hour of driving and I think that would have been a bad call so we haven't eaten all day um so we're gonna try and find some food good morning 6 a.m 
at our campsite in solitaire, Namibia. It's warm out, so I've got not a lot of clothing on. It's already, it's gonna be 34 degrees today. and I got really scared and then someone came along and drove us out. Um, Africa is no joke. We're, um, I think we're in a little over our heads here, but we're trying our best. And Nikias is doing an absolutely phenomenal job of keeping us safe, so all the power to him. We've arrived at the parking lot and to be honest, we're both fearing we bit off a little more than we could chew. Um, Nikias is exhausted and we've only been driving for the last three hours and we have like a hundred hours of driving to go on this trip. This is a real challenge and as prepared as we were or as that we feel we were, admittedly with the stuff getting stolen in Windhoek, and then the long drives. It's a little scary. <laughs> there is no greater feeling than seeing something that's been on your bucket list and you've seen it on Instagram <laughs> and then you get to stand here in real life and say, I'm here. <laughs> I did the intense, arduous journey of getting to where I wanted to be. Driving on the stupid sand, getting stuck, driving for hours, getting lost, not having food, water, and here's this place, no clothes, but we're here. And that is such a good feeling. Okay, we've seen it, and now we trek back across just a massive, it's just red dunes, 360. That's all it is. It's hot and it's dry. I've never, it's kind of like Mars. I've never been anywhere like it. It's absolutely breathtaking, both literally and figuratively. I'm glad we came here, even though it was a nightmare. I am really glad we came here and got to see this for ourselves. This is raw. safely and we stopped at a gas station for lunch because there's really nothing else in this town there's a gas station and some campsites so we've got gas station sandwiches oh i just put my fucking arm in bird shit <laughs> and we also have pie <laughs> and i bought a five liter we won't go thirsty on the road because damn is it hot out here. We are back in Solitaire, which is the place we camped last night. 
So we've driven all the way out and come all the way back um, for a toilet break. And we've just checked the temperature. It's 33 degrees. No wonder we're absolutely melting. I feel bad for you though, because you don't have shorts. Shit, man. So, officially, we're just driving north in Namibia. We're officially halfway between the equator and the South Pole. to stay at tonight. We made it with plenty of time with daylight. It's called Tiger Reef in Swakopmund. You can get a little hut. There's the house. And because we bought so much food, we can actually cook for ourselves, which is a nice feeling. Udon. Soy mince. Corn. Tell ya. I miss living on the road. I really, really love it. I love it so much. Stripped back. Everything to just what you actually need in life. Good morning. And we are just having our breakfast now. Well, I'm having breakfast. Nikia's just drinking coffee, he doesn't eat breakfast. <laughs> and we're just about to pack up. We've been getting up super early on the road because um, you only get about, well, we usually try to leave camp around 6.30 in the morning, so that gives us 13 hours of daylight to work with because you absolutely shouldn't drive after sunset anywhere in Africa. Um, it's just too dangerous with the gravel roads, the wild animals, um, the like possibility of not seeing a car on the road because there's no lights on the highways, um, drunk drivers, you just have no idea what's going on. And also just the risk of theft increases, which we've already experienced. So you really, it's recommended, like strongly advised that you are in your campsite before sundown. So that does mean that we have to start earlier so that we have the daylight to work with in the morning before we get going. Because if we start our day at like eight or nine, we would lose three really valuable hours. So we tend to get up pretty early around here, which um, was hard at the beginning, but I started that in Cape Town already and I'm pretty much getting used to it now. So, hmm. Now it feels really nice to wake up early and be the first one out. Maybe this trip is gonna turn me into a morning person. We've made it out to a place called Spitzkoppe, which is basically, it reminds us a lot of Uluru actually in Australia. It's just a big mass of red rocks. This is the Spitzkoppe, but the whole thing is Spitzkoppe National Park. And you can just sort of explore. Poison. Poison were one of the earliest human beings that lived in this area here. Otherwise, they were known as San. And San, it comes from a Damara word. And it means they like picking just from the ground or even just gathering. 
So when they would do these paintings, like the Rhino painting, they use a special stone called Oka. Oka stone we find it more in the northern part of the country, in the Opuo area. Same stone that is used by the Himbas for protection against the sun, mm. almost like sunscreen. So they grind it down in fine powder and just to give it the red color, they mix it with island blood. Island is this antelope over here. And uh, to the Bushmen, it was considered as one of their most powerful and sacred animals. Okay, before we head out on our next long drive north, we're stopping in the little national park. And I just made cups of coffee. I don't drink coffee normally, but I forgot to buy tea yesterday, so. Actually, I didn't forget. I actively chose not to buy it, and I'm regretting that decision, so tomorrow we're gonna buy some tea. <laughs> we've just been driving on the worst roads I think we've had in Namibia so far we've had some bad roads so we were really concerned because we're only like 10 kilometers from our camp tonight we were worried that we were going to be in the middle of nowhere some hokey poke place that we wouldn't feel safe staying at we'd have to leave and find somewhere else and then in the middle of the damn desert is a paved road and I think we're going to be just fine because in Namibia paved road is a sign of civilization I've got LTE cell phone coverage out here I think we're feeling pretty good about this actually Camp number three of the trip. Um, this is called Twyfel Fontaine, and um, we are the only people here. But it's also quite early in the day, and people don't usually get to camp until later on. My lips are getting super chapped in this Namibian heat, but it's cute. This is our tent. Um, and he's got sunstroke, sunburn, doesn't have any of his stuff, and he's got something in his eye that's causing him a lot of uh, irritation, like a burst blood vessel or something like that. So he's not doing great. <laughs> so he is sleeping <laughs> at camp. But it's only about five o'clock, which means we have another like two and a half hours of daylight, and I didn't really just want to sit at camp doing nothing. So I'm gonna go for a walk. rugged and harsh landscapes but I'm here and aside from the few people who work at camp and the three other guests at the camp there's nothing so there's really no trail up here I've just been trekking through the grass and oh my god are the views just Mind blowing. Good morning. There's our little camp. I'm just going to the bathroom and I'm filming this because I want to show you the bathroom. It's outdoors. It's a row of cabinets. Some are showers, some are toilets. And I quite literally mean this is the bathroom. Toilet. It's open to the elements. You just you pee with everybody here. Mm -hmm. 
So we were parking, we were about to get out and go and see some stuff and we noticed that our back tire was getting flat. Um, you can see it's quite smushy and um, you can't, probably can't hear it. But there's a hole, like it's leaking, we can hear the air coming out. And we were like in the middle of the desert, in the middle of literally nowhere. Um, we're like, what are we gonna do? Neither of us are very good at changing tires and we're in the middle of nowhere. So we look on our maps, seven kilometers away from us is a workshop for cars. We don't think there's another one of these for like 600 kilometers in any direction. I think after all the shit we've been through, this is a little bit of good karma. Not the flat tire, but the fact that there's people who are gonna help us out. Okay, so tire fixed, and then we went to go see the place we wanted to go and see, which is the rock art here in Twyfel Fonte, and it's cash only. And we haven't had a chance to get out of maybe in dollars yet. So I'm at the local country lodge, which is kind of a luxury adventure place in the desert here, where they said you can change euros to Namibian dollars, and I do have a bunch of euros with me. Fingers crossed. Cash acquired. Okay, we finally made it to Twyfel Fontaine. It's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site out here. So we learned that the name Twyfel Fontaine is an Afrikaans name, meaning Doubtful Spring, because apparently when the first white farmer moved out here in 1946, he found the spring and he wanted to farm his sheep out here, but the spring was so small that it was doubtful. Sometimes a little bit of water, sometimes a lot. They only stayed for 12 years because the water wasn't reliable enough. The spring is actually just back here. It is also known as the sun, the sun beetle. They were using the quartz stones. These are the quartz. It's a very hard stone. And this is a sand stone, a softer material. That's why it was easy for them to make engravings. It's an ostrich, the big one on the top. Do you see that one? Yeah. just about to enter our first national park of the trip. It's not true, I think Namibia had a national park, but like our first like game park. We've already seen seven giraffe and two zebras on the drive into the park. Nikias is just filling out the paperwork to get us into the park. We're so excited. Got our little cooking station, and we're gonna sit here. We even have electricity at this one. In the back of our van, this is our fridge. And I'm charging my camera battery. And then around here, that's the tent. Okay, so we're at our campsite in Itosha, the Okakwejo campsite for the night. And we just had dinner, and before, as you can see, the sun is setting. And we're gonna go see, there's a water hole right in camp where apparently you can sometimes see animals. So, that's what we're doing now. It's 
our first full day in Atosha and we've got up really early to do our game drive. Um, this is one of the national parks where you can self-drive. So we've just left our campsite and now you could do a self-guided like 134 kilometer drive through Atosha National Park. And basically the plan is just to see as many animals along the way as possible. out of the car in the national park except for in these little fenced in toilet and picnic stops and they've placed them strategically along the route because the gravel roads are not very conducive to a bladder being full. yesterday and patched up in Twyfel Fontaine. When we drove through Atosha National Park, it busted on us again. So we are now in a place called Namutoni. It's on the other, like Oka Kwejo is on the west side of Atosha. We drove 134 kilometers across Atosha, did our safari, and now we're at Namutoni, which is the other entrance. Getting our car fixed once again. just after sunset um, which obviously we don't like driving after sunset but we need to get down here to hopefully try and pick up the suitcase today we haven't actually heard back from the police yet so 
Um, we have no idea when or where the suitcase will be ready for us, or even if it's coming to go about us or if it's still in Windhoek. So we're trying to stay positive. Um, I got up at the normal time, but he slept in a little bit because um, he drove like 10 hours yesterday and we have another nine hour drive into Botswana today. So we're really excited about that, but we're hoping we can go to Botswana with the suitcase. Hey, we are leaving Namibia. We are about to drive across the border into Botswana, our next country on the trip. And that is the end of our six days, five nights, dramatic <laughs> Namibia adventure. So this is very exciting. I'm um, gonna end the Namibia series here and catch you in Botswana.